7-Eleven coffee, only the best when you're about to start an edit. Hey guys, so today we wanted to dive into a little bit of post-processing and show you our editing workflow, specifically with mobile footage um, and how we take that from the phone to the computer and set up and edit. This video isn't only about mobile video, so if you do have a traditional DSLR or camcorder, which I'm shooting on right now actually, um, this will still apply all the same practices and we will also be using Adobe Premiere. That's just the editing platform of our choice. But if you're using Final Cut or anything else, you can still take a lot of those same practices over to that. So. To show you some post work, we first need an edit. So let's go, let's go film a couple things. All right, we are back. Um, so that skating actually took place a couple days ago and now we're gonna film this editing part here. All that was shot on the Galaxy S9 Plus with the wide lens and the iPhone 8 Plus. The reason we did two phones was to show you how you can transfer everything from an Android to your Mac and also from iOS. This whole video is kind of biased the way we do it. It's not necessarily the right way, it's just the way we go about it. Um, okay, so let's dive into it. The first thing you wanna do on your desktop or on your external hard drive, wherever you're gonna have your main folder for this project, uh, just open a new folder and you'll rename that to skating. Cool, call that good. Um, within the folder, this is what Niles actually taught me. Within that folder, you're gonna make two new folders. One called raw and the other one called live works. Basically the thought behind this is that if this is on an external hard drive or on your local hard drive, you can take this project file and hand it off to somebody else. They'll have all the assets built into that folder that they can just double click, open up, and everything is actually sourcing from this folder. So in your main folder, you have these two folders, RAW and LiveWorks. RAW is basically gonna be what cameras you shot on or what phones you shot on. So I'm gonna name this folder Galaxy S9 Plus, and then I'll make another one called iPhone 8 Plus, and then I'll make a third one called C100. So after you've made your folders, you're gonna drag the footage from each device into that said folder. So let's break it down by phones. So the easiest way, in my opinion, to do an iPhone to Mac um, is AirDrop. If you've never used AirDrop before, it's super simple. Just open up on your iPhone or iOS device um, the Photos album. You're gonna hit Select, and then you're gonna select the clips you wanna bring over to your Mac. And then you'll open up AirDrop on the Mac, and you'll find that device. Okay, so simple enough. After it is transferred from AirDrop from your phone, it's gonna end up in your Downloads folder. So it'll be right at the top here, and we just did these six clips. So we'll drag those right into the iPhone 8 Plus folder. Um, now for the Galaxy S9 Plus, um, it's pretty cool. All you do for Mac is take your USB-C to USB-C cable, plug it straight in, and there is this software I downloaded called Android File Transfer, which we'll link below. So it's for Mac, and it basically lets you use Android phones and access a device just like Image Capture would or another software. Basically, it's the easiest way to pull footage from your Android phone to your Mac. You first have to open up the phone screen and you allow access to the device, or else it will say, like on the screen here, can't access device storage. So now that you're in it, it automatically pops up here, um, and it will look it will look kind of kind of weird at first, just a bunch of folders. But basically, you're going to be under DCIM, and that's your camera. And then you want to scroll down to the most recent date. So we shot this on 5:21, 
at all the clips from 521. We are gonna drag and drop, literally just drag and drop straight into the Galaxy S9 Plus folder. So, um, so USB-C to USB if you don't have a newer MacBook, uh, but this is what we use. So Android file transfer is a lifesaver, I think, when it comes to Android phones. I use it with the Pixel, I use it with the Galaxy phones, um, and that's, yeah, that's what I've been using for that. Um, Niles and I both. And then iPhone, it's pretty much all AirDrop. Unless you have a ton of 4K footage, um, I would say then you could pretty much plug it in the same way as this, use image capture, drag and drop into your folder. Most of the time, um, I am using an external hard drive, so all the same principles apply. I'm just putting it on my desktop drive right now. So when that's done, you just unplug it, super simple, and you're done. The footage is still on your phone, and now it's on your computer. Um, you can delete it later if you want, or delete it straight from your computer, but I just tend to leave everything on there until I need more space. So as you can see here, iPhone 8 Plus footage is in, and the Galaxy S9's footage is in. C100 I'm shooting on, so that's not gonna be in there yet. Um, and screen recordings, I'll put the, those in the same folder so all the assets are right within this folder. So in LiveWorks, that's where you'll add, um, add a folder called Project. So Project is the actual Adobe Premiere project file that references all the footage and everything and is the project. In LiveWorks, we also do a GFX folder, an SFX folder, an MX folder, and I know this might all sound a little bit advanced right now, but I promise it's super easy and you don't need all of them. We do an AE folder. I don't know why that didn't go. And we do an exports. Okay, so this might look a little bit intimidating, but you don't need all of them. I'll walk through what each of them means. So AE is After Effects. Anything in your project that you have you know, rendered out from After Effects, a title sequence, or an animation, you wanna put that asset in there. Exports is your final export. Um, so when the video's done, you export it to this folder. GFX stands for graphics, so if I have like a moment logo, like a PNG that I put in there, that would live in that graphics folder, or you have a photo you wanna insert into your edit, anything graphic related. MX stands for music, so any music in the edit drops into this folder here. And SFX is sound effects, so any sound design, texture sounds, wind, uh, thuds, swooshes, that lives in sound effects. So now that you have your full folder structure built out, it's pretty simple. You open up Premiere Pro. Shout out to the 13-inch MacBook Pro users out there. They're definitely not an editing powerhouse, but they can get the job done. So, super easy. Once Premiere opens, you want to open up a new project file, and we'll call this Skating with phones and you'll name it here you'll hit browse and right on browse you'll go and actually find where you put that folder so and then you're going to go into liveworks and project so this is actually telling premiere where to put that project file and what the name is so you'll choose project folder and hit choose and then you know the location is in LiveWorks project and you're good. Hit OK and it will start the project. What we do immediately from here then is drag in this raw folder just as is right into the library. That will import all your footage and give you the same folder structure in your library as you had it referenced in the folder. So you'll click down the drop arrow and you'll see Galaxy S9, iPhone 8 Plus, and the screen recording. The C100's uh, folder was empty, so it didn't actually recognize any footage from that. Um, let's click the drop down on the S9 Plus. And you can see our footage is in here. And it's definitely out of order. So a way to fix the out of order footage. This is a big one that always gets me. Um, I hate when footage is not in chronological order. What I do is you'll hit the tilde key on your keyboard once you clicked on the library and that will make it full screen here. You'll right click on this line, hit metadata display, click the check mark basic. What this will allow you to do is toggle the creation date um, little icon thing here and that will, you'll press the tilde key to get back out of it. 
And then now at the top of your footage in here, they are in order. So we started out inside, scrub through this. So now that your footage is all in order, um, basically what I wanted to show you in this edit is to build that folder structure, get it into your project, and then start your timeline. I'm not gonna go into full editing like process, but uh, from here, what I would usually do, so just we shot everything in 1080, 60 frames per second, because with action and a lot of skating, we wanted the ability to slow it down. Um, and typically with 60 frames per second, in my head, it's most of the time always gonna be used in the slow-mo format, so you're gonna convert it. So the easiest way to convert footage, you can do this with DSLRs. This whole, this whole actual process works with phones and DSLRs or cinema cameras. It's all the same the way we, we approach it. But you'll highlight all this footage, and you can see the frame rate um, in the project that it's spitting out. And you can see actually it's a little bit off. Every It's like 59, 69, and yeah, it's a little bit, phones are funny. Highlight all those, right click, and you'll go up to modify, interpret footage, you'll click assume this frame rate, and then I always do 23976, which is basically 24 frames per second, and what that will do, you'll click OK, and it immediately converts all that footage that was in 60 to 24, um, meaning it's going to give you a slow motion look right in the preview window. And this might sound confusing at first, the first time you do this, or you are setting up the project. We did position this video a little bit as a beginner's tips. We we'll might, might do an intermediate um, and an advanced video later, but this is really just to get you started. From your phone, you went and shot, now what do I do with the footage? It's on my computer, I wanna spend some time on an edit. Um, really how to get started. Another video we wanna do as well is actually how to edit on your phone. So whether that's in a, you know, you wanna make a really nice Instagram story, or you just went skating at the skate park, put a little edit together. Um, something that you can do on the phone, but that's in a future video. Back to this. Typically what I do, now that I'm scrubbing through the footage in chronological order, I'll look through all the footage in the preview window, and you can use the keys I and O on your keyboard to set your in and out points right on your preview window. So let's say we start with this clip of me walking, putting the board down, and pushing. Um, you can then drag that clip right down into your timeline. So when you drag the clip down from the preview window, it will put it into the timeline and actually set up a timeline with the correct settings for you. And the sound will obviously be in slow motion because you just converted all the footage uh, to a slower frame rate, so it will sound like a robot. Go down to the next clip, which we did a little cutaway. Look at that motion blur on the edges. Looks pretty sweet. So maybe we'll add a clip here. I don't know if this will be the final edit or not. Um, when this video goes live on YouTube, you will have this part in the video, so I'll probably massage it out a little bit more. So uh, as you build your timeline out further and further, um, for instance, this one, I will drop in this, you know, my intro clip that you saw in this video in front of this timeline. Music will come in, you'll see the skating, and then it will be however long this video is of me talking to the camera and showing you the screen grab of me doing this project. And see, for now, I'm not really happy with these cuts. I'm just putting them on the timeline so you can see, but it would be cool to get them to flow a little bit more and with music. So once I find music, I would drop that in. So I think I have something in downloads I can just pull real quick. Yeah, this song. So don't drag it from your downloads folder straight into Premiere. Ne never do that. Don't do that with any graphics or anything. You want to either drag it from downloads or copy it from downloads and then go to your folder that you built earlier. Go to Liveworks and MX for music and just Command V, paste it. So that when you do drag this, then drag your MX folder into your Premiere project. It's referencing the correct folder and your music is right in here. Oh, this is like a, I didn't even listen to the song. This is super like moody. And then you, you can just drag that right underneath your footage. So. Now 
masterpiece. Um, yeah, that's kind of the basics of the workflow. Um, I would say from this, you just spend the next however long it takes you. Some people can edit videos really quick in a few hours. Some people take weeks to work on a video. Um, spend as much time in the timeline. This is really when you're really building out the project. Be picky about your cuts and just get it the way you like it, um, the way you envision it in your head. For this though now, I would say um, that is how we start the project and how we put everything in. So just the main reference is getting it from the phone back into the folders, then from the folders, referencing the correct folder structure into the project. When you're ready to export it, uh, it's as simple as, I usually will render it out, but you can basically export it out from your timeline. You can also rename the timeline, so if you have multiples, we'll, we'll do this in a different video. But for, for exporting, super simple, just go to your timeline, you'll hit File, Export Media, Presets, you can do, Premiere has a built-in like YouTube H 1080 HD preset, which is a great starter preset, um, depending on the quality you shot in. If you shot it in 4K, you can click that one, um, or in 720p. Format is H.264, which is a great codec that compresses it, but not, but, but still gives you a small file size. So um, QuickTime's another one you could use, but I pretty much stick to H.264 for anything that's going on the internet because web, uh, it streams a lot better. So then output name, you'll click on that and you'll click back in, you'll find your folder. So output name, you'll find your folder in the skating folder, LiveWorks, exports. You'll title this, my masterpiece with the S9. Um, hit enter, <clears throat> you can read, all this is basically telling you, because you clicked a preset, it's gonna do everything for you. If you hit Q, that will take you to Adobe Media Encoder if you're gonna do multiple videos or wanna work in the project while that's exporting, but I pretty much just hit export. And because this is literally just to show you the export, it's not the full video, it's gonna go really quick, but chances are on a setup like this, a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you know, a 10 minute video is gonna take 40 minutes. Um, cool, so that exported. Click back in Finder, your export's here, and boom, you can double click it, watch it right in here. <laughs> I didn't take the sound out either. Um, but it's as simple as that. That's your final video file. That's what you'll take and upload to YouTube. Um, so I know this video is a little bit all over the place, but I just wanted to walk you through the basic steps on how to get it going, how to set it up. And if you do have more questions, leave them in the comment. I hope this video helped some people, even if it was just the fact of how do I get my footage from my phone to my computer, maybe the Android file transfer helped you out. Um, if not, we will probably do a more in-depth video, um, but also one all mobile related to editing. So if you don't wanna take the edit to your computer and you do wanna do it on your phone, um, we do it a, a little bit, so anyways, I'll quit rambling. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and let us know if you have any questions.